Today we're talking about this old piece of tech. So this here is the Canon GL1. This camera came out in about 2000 and it takes mini DV cassette tapes. Believe it or not, this camera was actually about $2,600 when it first came out. And nowadays you can probably pick them up, give or take, around 250 bucks. So, you know, 250 bucks is still quite a bit of money, but, you know, for such an old piece of technology, it actually, you know, it still has a lot of good functions to it, so it's still very sought after. You know, you would probably think now, you wouldn't pay $2,600 for this freaking camera, but, you know, back in 2000, 1999, 2001, these cameras were, like, top of the line, like, best things that you could get. Canon had to keep up with Sony with their VX2000 and Panasonic with their DVX100. Okay, so we're going to go over the a few of the specs on the outside of the camera. So we'll take this lens hood off here. Well, not lens hood. It's lens cover. I, there you go. Anyway, lens hood. Um, I don't mind this lens hood. Um, it definitely, you know, with lens hoods and all that or sun shields, whatever you want to call them. The main purpose for them is for to block out like the, the sun rays making glares on the on the lens. But it also kinda protects, you know, things from bumping it and hitting the, the lens itself. So that's nice. Um, it also has a small little um, screw right here. It just keeps it tight so that way you don't something doesn't if something does bump it, it doesn't kinda knock it off and it just kind of flies off and breaks this just holds it real tight in place so you just loosen that until it's loose and you'll turn it like a like you're loosening a bottle cap or whatever and it pops off just like that so easy peasy now this is a 58 millimeter lens on here in diameter the th uh, lens threads are 58 millimeters so if you want to use any form of filter, wide angle, fisheye, you have to make sure that it is a 58 millimeter. We do have a lens protector on here. Um, you can get these in different forms. You can get a uh, um, UV filters and uh, polarized filters. They make a, a, a few different ones. This one's just clear, or they sometimes they call them um, ND filters. I definitely recommend getting one of these for any camera that you have, just because like I've said before, if you get something that bumps the camera and it scratches it, or if you're outside and you're filming with, like, in nature or something, and say, I don't know, you're walking through some shrubs, whatever kind of goofy reason that it might get scratched, you know, this will scratch way before you scratch the actual lens. Definitely a good investment. It is a 3CCD video camera, um, as were most video cameras in this era. Um, you do have a 20 times optical zoom with 100 times digital zoom. 20 is, it's, it, I think it's fine for me. Um, I don't really think you need any more than that. It's just, you know, if something's that far away or farther away that you can't zoom in on that, it's just going to get super shaky and you'll probably need a tripod to use it. So 20 is, it's money. <laughs> and then if you do need to go farther than that you can always use the digital zoom which I don't like because it just uses the pixels I guess you could say of it so it kind of distorts the, the image and doesn't look so good it does have optical image stabilization um, I find that it works pretty decent um, but if you are using like a fisheye or a wide angle um, you do want to turn that off just because um, if you have kind of like the black kind of rings on the outside, it wants to try and focus so then you'll see that kind of moving around in the in the picture and it's just it, it makes the image way more shaky than it should be with the image stabilization. So if you are using a wide angle or fisheye, definitely turn that off. And we also have a focus ring here, which is awesome because um, with 
you can use it while you have autofocus on and it'll as soon as you start spinning it it'll go to auto or excuse me manual focus if it's not focusing on something that is in autofocus you can use that to manually focus it and get it um, right where you need it and then as soon as you stop it'll go back to autofocus so that's nice and then you can also turn it to manual focus manually and use it for whatever you need the internal mic on this thing is pretty good actually <laughs> um, I'll show you some footage here soon, some raw footage with it so that you can hear the actual audio. Um, in my opinion, I don't think you really need a external mic for it, but for whatever reason that you do want one, you can always mount it here on the cold shoe. And then it plugs in on the side, this little flap over here, the little red plug-in. Or if you need a powered, um, mic for whatever reason you do have this smaller one here and then my favorite thing about these um i guess form of cameras is that they have this top handle up here that you can hold on to with a zoom rocker on top and a record button as well and then you have this um this little switch here on the side that's uh, a lock switch so if you lock it it will make it so that you are not able to use the functions up here so that way you don't bump it or stop recording for whatever start or stop recording for whatever reason if you're holding it like this or for whatever reason so I like that that you can turn it off and on and then you also have this little flap door here and that has all of your playback functions coming here on the side of the camera you have your ND filter which is your neutral density filter. Um, if it's super bright outside, you can turn that on and it'll kind of darken it up a little bit. And what's cool about it is the, the camera will tell you when you need to use it. So it'll tell you if it's too bright outside and you need to turn it on, or if it's too dark, you need to turn it off. So that's actually a pretty smart thing for a, ca uh, a camera back in these days. I think that's pretty cool. And then in the middle you have your manual and autofocus button um, that just turns it on and off. And then if you have a, a manual focus on, you obviously use your focus ring here. And then the last one here on the bottom, you have your digital effects button or DE. Um, and then what that is, is you can turn on like, uh, like fades and strobe effect and just kind of like, they're almost just like little add-on kind of presets to your video like when you stop recording it'll have like a fade to white or like a fade to black kind of little option they were kind of like little editing programs that were in the camera since there wasn't really um, very good editing programs back in the day and then coming down here to the bottom you have your exposure wheel now with the exposure wheel to um, manually use it you kind of click it in like a button and then you can scroll up and down plus or minus to brighten it up or um, darken it and then if you press it again um, you can have it on auto it's great that you don't have to go like into the menu and turn it off and on you can just push it push it again everything is very easy to get to on this camera which I love you don't have to go to really anything in the menu to, to find and then you have your white balance um, section down here um, you can select it or you can have like a, a manual um, selection so what you do with that with the manual you'll find like I don't know a white piece of paper or like a white t-shirt or something and you'll put the camera up to it so that it, it um, the white is the entire screen and you'll turn that on and it'll set the um, the white balance to what you need so that it's perfectly correct um, for whatever you're, you're shooting and then it's a little worn off but there's a little hand symbol down here that is your on and off button for your um, optical image stabilizer so like I said before if you're using a wide wide angle or a fisheye definitely turn that off and then if not I definitely keep it on all the time on top here you have your power switch which there's a little button in the middle you push down and then either slide to camera or media sorry VCR and what's kinda cool about this is you can kinda have two different ways of
turning it off and on. Um, you can leave the camera um, switch to camera, so it's always on. Then if you sw come back here, you have another little switch that says standby. So if you have the camera on, you can just um, switch it to lock, and it'll turn the camera off. And then you can just switch that back to standby, and it'll turn back on. Or you just leave it on standby and um, turn the camera off. And then obviously you switch it back to VCR to watch your, your playback. But instead of going into your playback, if you want to watch a clip that you just filmed, you have your um, search record right here. You have your plus and minus. So you just hold minus and it'll rewind back to what you just recorded without having to go back into the VCR or playback menu and rewind it. Okay, moving over to this little wheel here. This is your video mode um, selector. So the little green square is your kind of full um, auto mode, which in that case is you can't set anything to manual if you have that on. So if you want to have your auto features and be able to um, use manual modes, switch over to manual modes. Um, you just switch it over to like the little automatic um, one, which is just the little A selector, I guess you could say. Yeah. And then you have your TV, AV, manual, um, sand and snow, which I have used this in the snow. And that does work pretty well because like, I don't know if you've ever filmed out in the snow. If it's a sunny day and it's snowy, the just the snow is just kind of a a big glare, so everything's just kind of like washed out and super white. So that works quite well for that. And then you have spotlight. So if you're filming, I don't know, something that's on like a stage or something like that, um, you're filming like a graduation or something like that. Whatever, um, you can set it to that, and then it'll um, kind of focus in on um, that situation. I've never used it for that, so I'm not really actually sure how it looks for that. So, something to maybe play with if you have one of these cameras. Moving to the flip out screen, you have this little button lever here. If you want to open it, you push that and then pull the LCD screen out. It is a very small LCD, uh, you know, it gets the job done. Um, it has a very great image, in my opinion. I've messed with some cheaper cameras, like the, the the last video camera review I did was the Panasonic VDR-D230, I believe. That was the name of it. If I got that perfectly correct, like this video. <laughs> the screen quality on that was really terrible because, like, if you had, if you're looking at it and the screen was too flat, it would just be pretty much like a black screen. You couldn't really see what you wanted. And then if it was like too low, it'd be like white pretty much. So if you weren't looking at the screen like directly on, you couldn't see what you were recording exactly. So with this, it's not like that. It's like crisp. Um, it's not super pixely. It's just a great uh, video camera screen, LCD screen. So I love it. It's a great screen. Um, you have a uh, playback speaker here, which is pretty loud in my opinion. You do have um, a volume um, selector here so you can turn it up and turn it down. And then you also have LCD brightness which is great because if you're outside you can turn the brightness up so you can see it better or if you're inside and it's super bright you can turn it down. And then you have your date display and time code so that just turns on the um, the date stamp, uh, yeah, date stamp in the video. Uh, I don't really care for that so I just leave it off. And then you have another one for um, the clock, so you can change the the settings and the like the the time. So you can choose like the day, the time, the year, the month, all that. And then another little reset button that you have to get like a a pin or a, a paper clip or something to stick in there and and reset it. All right, moving to the viewfinder. Um, if you as soon as you turn the camera on, the viewfinder will always be on. Um, but if you pull the LCD screen out, it turns the LC or the viewfinder off and the LCD screen on, so you don't have both going at the same time. Then as soon as you close it, it'll be on on the viewfinder. Now, doesn't matter where the viewfinder is, if you have it slid all the way out, 
it'll be on. If it's up like this, it'll be on. If you kind of slide it back in, it'll be on. No matter what, if the camera's on, the, the, the viewfinder's on, as long as the screen isn't on. Now, to get the battery out, um, you have this, there's a little kind of button right here next to the viewfinder. To get to that, you have to pull the viewfinder out and tip it up, and then you can get to the button. You just push it in, pull up on the battery, and it comes out. This is a larger, it's an extra, what's the word I'm looking for? The extra life battery. It lasts a lot longer than the original ones, which are much smaller. But, you know, if you don't like the weight of these extra large batteries, then definitely go with, like, the smaller ones. They do still make these if you are needing one of these batteries for your camera. Um, I do have a link in the description that I will put in. And these batteries work with the GL2 and the XL1 and XL2. All those cameras use these exact same batteries. So if you have any of those cameras, these will work for it. And they still make them. I will put a link in the description if you need it. Moving over to the other side of the camera, you have obviously your hand strap, which is awesome because you can either hold it like this, you can go dad mode, or if you want to get down low, obviously, you can just hold it like this. Or if you're like running after somebody, you can hold it like this and it's a lot easier to to point and shoot, I guess you could say. So I like I love that you can have two different options instead of having to buy like um, like a hot shoe handle or um, like a filming handle where it screws in on the bottom here and then it curves up up here and then you have this big old rig that you have to screw in every time. This is just ready to go as soon as you turn it on. So to get to the cassette deck or to get to, the, to put your tape in, um, you have this little lever here that says open. You, s you push it push it forward and then pull out on the cassette door and then you'll have another little green button here that says eject and just push that and you'll hear it turn on and then you're ready for your cassette to be in and then you want to make sure that obviously that the um, I guess the gears are on the inside and the tape thing is on the bottom You'll just slide it in there, close the door, and then it'll go, go down by yourself. You don't want to push it down because it can ruin it. And as soon as it goes all the way down, you can close the door, and you're ready to go. Now, we have another rocker zoom here. Um, this one's actually very nice. Um, it It's really smooth. You can get it to really, I don't know, it's really, it's not super touchy. Like, you can, you can really get it to, like, where you want um, zooming with it. And you also have another photo button here. And then, for the last part, you have um, a movie frame little switch. Now you have movie frame on and then normal mode. What movie frame does is it puts the, the black bars on top of your, your video. But since this film's in standard definition, um, you have it cropped in on the sides. So if you do use that, it'll crop it in on the top. So then you'll just be watching like a little square on your phone or your TV or whatever you're watching it on. So I leave that off just because it crops in on the side and I don't want it to be this little square that I'm watching. Then on the back here you have this little flap. You have your DV in and out, you have your wired remote, and then you have your AV in and out, and then your S video in and out. So I like that it gives you both options for that. And then you obviously have a headphone jack. So I will go out and get some footage with this to show you what it looks like. I will be using composite just because my video recorder box is, for some reason it doesn't like to show up with S video. So I'll show you what it looks like in AV or composite, component, composite, whatever it's called. Canon GL1. I am using just the Inter so this is what obviously what it sounds like. Um, I'm using everything on auto right now. There's nothing that's set on manual. So this is the auto lighting and exposure and focus and all of that. Um, I'm going to go out and film some different things 
in some different areas so you can get more of a diverse look at how this camera acts and works in different environments and all that. So let's get into it. Alright, so we're here at the City Creek Trail. This is considered Trail Creek. So we're gonna go up here. I have Jackson with me. Just because I can't fit two dogs in my truck, I got one. Are you serious right now? I'm trying to get a pretty shot and you're over here kicking stuff around, ruining my shot. I've never been down this trail. It's a lot prettier than the other way. The other way it just looks like it's like desert. So this is nice. At least in this patch anyway. Okay, here is my vlog attempt. Uh, I guess you could try vlogging with this, but this thing's freaking a little too big and heavy to be holding it up here like this. I already had to switch hands. It's just way too heavy, but you know, I guess if you could do it, you wanted to use it, you could. So, I guess this is a good time to talk about this. If you have seen any of my other videos, you probably know that I'm kind of getting into hiking and backpacking. As you can see, that I'm doing kind of here, except I haven't really brought anything with me. I kind of want this channel to be a little bit of both. I want to talk about cameras. I want to talk about backpacking as I kind of grow into it. Maybe some products with backpacking. I don't know. Hiking. So, yeah, this channel is going to be a little bit of both. Because, you know, you can bring cameras and camera gear with you on hikes and backpacks. I figure I might as well talk about them. I'm more into like the more classic retro um, collectible cameras but you know you can always still take those with you give your your videos more of a memorability memorabilia look to them as you can see with this one so with this camera I probably wouldn't recommend taking it like on hikes and backpacking I just take it out here just because I don't have to deal with people around. And I'm not gonna, you know, go into town and pretend I'm vlogging or doing a vlogging test. So we're doing it out in the woods. And then I can take my jacket bowl with me as well. It's a pretty little spot we stopped at too. Also, if you wanted to, which I have done before, you can use this camera for action sport. Follow along with somebody with a fisheye, and you can hold it by the top handle. So, it works great for that as well. And the boy ran off somewhere. I don't know where he... Oh, I see him. There you are. Did you go say hi? Big old dog's scaring me. Oh, they're gonna play. Where'd your friend go? What the hell? Oh, he's over here. There he is, hi! What are you doing out here? Are you out here with anybody? Hey! What are you doing out here? Huh? Are you out here all by yourself? That was just weird. 
just a big black dog out here. Didn't look like he had a collar on him or anything. There's nobody else out here on the trail. I hope he didn't run off and get lost. He lives... I know there's houses that are... up here... somewhere. Maybe he got lost running around out there or something. I don't know. Alright, so this is using the 20 times optical zoom. Still zooms in pretty far. And now we'll use the 100 times digital zoom. is the digital zoom all the way it's very hard to hold still that is literally the other side of town there's some like military helicopters flying but I don't know if you can hear it on the audio right now Let's see if I can zoom in on them. Alright, that is it for the review on this camera. Um, I hope that it helped you out in any way, shape, or form. Or if you were just curious of, you know, about one of these cameras and looked it up, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed it, please hit like, and if you want to watch any more of my other videos, go ahead and subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you later.